Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove the air intake manifold on this 2002 Mercedes. Since this is a back wheel drive with a four cylinder in line, the engine is set up longitudinally in the engine bay. So it means that the air intake manifold will be on the driver's side. First step is to depressurize the fuel line, which usually looks like this and it goes to the fuel rail. To do that, go back in the trunk and on the driver's side, you will find a panel with fuses. Then remove the fuel pump relay located on the top left and the fuel pump fuse which is the fourth one from the top on the right side. Then start the car and let it consume the last amount of fuel pressure from the system. Then since we are going to disconnect a lot of sensors, a good safety caution is to disconnect the negative terminal of the battery which is located under the cabin filter on the passenger side. Now, once all the preparation is done, you can begin by removing the mass airflow sensor. So with a 7mm, you can release the hose clamp from the throttle body side. Pop off the electric connector. Then with a T20, remove this bolt. Slide the rubber hose off. And now you get better access to the second T20 bolt. Undo it. And the mass airflow sensor together with the rubber hose will come out. Continue on the throttle body with the hex number 5, remove these three bolts. Once the cover is loose, with a 10mm release the exhaust recirculation pipe clamp and pull it out. On the throttle body there is one more 5mm hex to be removed. Pop off the electric connector, disconnect the vacuum line and this electric throttle body is off. Next, you've got this little vacuum pump to be removed. So disconnect the top hose, the bottom one, and pop off the electric connector. The last vacuum line can be pulled out and I will reconnect it back to the vacuum pump so I won't forget about it. Then on the oil dipstick, there is a plastic holder for one of the vacuum lines. So pop it off and place it out of the way. Now on top of the intake there is a sensor which was connected actually with the vacuum pump by that vacuum line I removed. So with a T25 I will remove the sensor, pop off the electric connector and store it with its bolts on so I won't mix them up. Next you can begin by disconnecting the fuel supply hose from the fuel rail with a 17mm wrench and expect some fuel to come out even though you release the pressure. There we go. Pop out the fuel injectors electric connectors by using your fingers or pliers as you can see. For the last injector, since there is not much space, use two slim tools to press on the clips and pull the connector out. Now you can temporarily zip tie the wire harness out of the way. With an E12 undo these two bolts which hold the rail on. And you will find these two long bolts. Now you can see that the fuel rail is connected on the injectors by some special seal clips. So all you have to do is to pull them out with a plier, trying not to lose them as I did here. Now you can pull out the fuel rail and expect the remaining fuel to come out. Then take out the injectors by twisting and pulling them at the same time. Now on the intake there is nothing connected anymore except of this hose which can be disconnected by pressing on those two tabs. And there is an air temperature sensor on the bottom which you can remove once you loosen the intake manifold from the engine block. So with a 30mm socket and an universal joint, I will undo these three bolts on the bottom which are the most difficult ones to get access to. After some wiggling, I got access to the last sensor connected at the bottom of the intake, which looks exactly the same as the one on top. So if this sensor goes wrong, it will bring you trouble codes, which are displayed on the screen. A few things you can see with the air intake manifold off. The intake valves, which you can inspect for any carbon buildup, physical damage or how well they close. You can get access to the starter down there and the power steering pump. After you have done the tasks you needed while the intake was out, give it a clean if yours have oil on it. 
also replace those two gaskets. On the engine put some aluminum foil on the holes to prevent any dirt while cleaning the contact surface. Then remove them and insert the intake back. From now the installation is the reverse process so I will only focus on some important points. Bolts for the air intake torque them to 20 foot pounds. When installing back the injectors and the fuel rail make sure that you connect first the injectors on the fuel rail so you will find that the clip goes only one way through a very thin cut on the injector. To make your life more easier put some oil on the injectors just enough so it will be lubricated to go easier in the intake manifold. Then the fuel rail torque it to 20 foot pounds. There we go. Finally torque the throttle body bolts to 10 foot pounds. Also install back all the wires and vacuum lines you removed followed by the mass airflow sensor. Alright guys, that was it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and until next time, take care and I will see you soon.